guys, this is Kirsty and we're doing a Lightroom tutorial covering the basics to have today. I did record the audio um, but it turns out my recorder wasn't on at the time so this is a voiceover that we'll try and give you all the details uh, that we went through or that I went through on this edit. So bear with me. Starting here with a picture I took on uh, an exploration of an abandoned castle. You can see it's all overgrown, the exposure is okay, um, and it's generally an alright photograph, but we will try and tweak it and make it better. So, the first thing I did was turn on the clipping masks, and these highlight if there is any pure black or pure white areas in the actual photo itself. So we want to minimise those areas. What I'm doing just now is lowering the exposure just to get rid of those clipping masks. So the red areas you're seeing are pure white areas. So I'm just decreasing the exposure and increasing the contrast just so that we get more of a, a natural look and no clipping. I'm doing the same with the highlights. So if I take it up, you can see those red areas increase and that means it's pure white. So I just lower that and then increase the shadows just to bring up some of the details in the darker areas, making sure not to go too far and then we get some pure black clipping areas. Then do the same with the whites and the blacks. Again, if we open, if we decrease that, then we are reducing the clipping. And if we take the blacks all the way down, you can see the detail just completely gets lost in the uh, call them plants. <laughs> I've totally lost the word. Um, if we increase the blacks, then that means there's no shadow or contrast at all so we'll try and keep them to a nice middle ground. I'm now going to increase the texture for the type of photography that I do it's always quite um, rustic, grungy, there's always a lot of texture in here so the brickwork and the grass is all going to be really uh, highlighted with the texture and clarity um, the sliders. You don't want to go too high, otherwise it looks very, very fake. And if you go way down, it looks very, very, um, very fantasy looking, kind of foggy and very blurred. But if you go way up, then it's very, very sort of HDR look, and we don't want that either. So I'm just putting the clarity up to about 10, and I'm going to put that texture at about 25 as well. I like the look of that here. You can also uh, add some dehaze. You can bring it down for a kind of foggy effect, but in this case it just looked kind of pale and muted. And I didn't like that, um, putting it up just made the contrast and the clarity a bit more, but I thought I'll just keep it as it is. Um, increasing the vibrance makes it very, very green in this case. Um, I didn't want that, so I lowered the vibrance and lowered the saturation just for uh, effect, really, just to highlight grunginess, the abandoned look. Um, I don't want to put it too far down because then it goes black and white. And I wanted to keep some of the colour but I wanted it very muted um, to give that impression of the sort of atmospheric feel that I experienced. That's pretty much the basics panel. Um, there's so much tweaking you can do. You can uh, spot removal as well um, and I was going to have a look at that but at the moment I'm going to straighten trying to straighten the photograph here but I did it wrong <laughs> so I undo that and I try again manually uh, doing it with the tool never seems to work for me so I'm just doing it by eye assist the angle slider here. I'm trying to straighten it up a little bit um, 
um, I shot it with a wide angle lens, so it's quite difficult to get um, a kind of proper person's straight on view. What do you call it? <laughs> I've lost my words. <laughs> anyway, you can do more straightening down on the effects panel um, later on if you want. I'm going to use a spot removal tool to take away this packet um, just to try and make it look a bit nicer. I'm actually going to do this twice. Um, it automatically selects an area and it's tried to use the stone which isn't helpful at all so you just drag that down to the area you want to sort of copy or look like and you can see it has hidden it for the most part but I want to do it again because I can still see it because I know it's there so I'm just going to redo that with a bigger not redo it but do an extra uh, more jaggy random shape and then take a sample from another area of the grass again it defaults to this stone area I don't know why it does that but you can easily move it and then that's going to cover it a little bit more and because it's so far away it's such a little part of the the image it really doesn't stand out too much and I think that looks pretty good I'm also going to reduce the temperature and just create a little bit more atmosphere just giving it a bit of blue and a bit of purple not overdoing it, I'm still trying to keep it quite natural but I like how this is turning out so a little bit blue, a little bit purple and I think we're done here let me know what you think like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill thanks for watching